Hello everyone, welcome to this JMeter tutorial. In this tutorial, we will learn about the timers in the JMeter. So let's begin. Now let's first understand why we need timers and what are timers in JMeter. So first understand what are timers in JMeter. Okay. So in order to understand the timers, first let's understand a scenario. What happens if you create a JMeter script? It will consist of multiple requests like request one, request two, then request three, right? So by default, what happens is that by default, let me write by default, default. So by default, JMeter will execute all above request without any delay and now if jmeter is executing request one after one one after one so it will not create a realistic jmeter performance script because in real time let's suppose as a user if you're going to any application you will open the browser you will take some time to write any website for example google.com then it will take some time to load and then once it's, it's got loaded then you will be typing what you need to search okay and if you go to some specific e-commerce site maybe you're exploring some products so you will take some time to explore the products right so there's always a time between the request so in order to make your script more realistic like more realistic so you need to add timers in jmeter so what these timers will do it will delay it will add the delay it will add the delay between the request so what happens is that after adding the timers the things will go in such a way okay let me copy from here and paste it here so it will take like maybe after this request it will wait for or delay for maybe five seconds okay that's what actual user might be taking time for example maybe here it take three seconds okay and here it might take six seconds okay so this is the scenario we need to populate so how this will be done so this will be done using the timers so what we will be doing here is that we will be adding the timers against these requests so that we can mimic the actual time taken by the user as we know that by default jmeter will not add any delay here now let's open the jmeter and see how we can use the timers and what kind of timers we are available here now open the jmeter and go to the test plan go to add go to the thread group okay and against this thread group let's add http request so i'm adding multiple requests here let me copy and paste the request here and now let's open the browser and make some request here let's create a script so go to the browser and go to the jmeter official website so this is an official website right so let me create the script for this one okay so go back to the jmeter here so going to the first request it would be like jmeter home page then let me change let me find some other request like get started okay so let me go to the jmeter again change the name to get started then let me go to to the user manual or maybe the best practices okay so go back to the jmeter here let me create best practices okay and let me now populate these values like we need to provide the protocol we need to provide the server name and if there is any path we need to provide the path okay so let me go to here so this is our website okay, let me come from here 
and paste it here and we don't need to provide a protocol here we need to provide a protocol here okay so our first request is ready the second one is get started okay we need to provide HTTPS here and we need to provide the main or the host name okay here and then we have for get started we have this URL okay let me copy from here and go back to this one so slash path okay and then also we need to provide the HTTP request here and uh, let me copy from this one and then we are talking about the best practices so click on best practices okay and let me copy this complete one from here okay and go to the gmeter and provide the path so we have populated our request here now add a listener here and see either it's working or not okay so we have added a listener here just run this one and see what happens so i am giving name as timers and let's see what happens so our all request got executed successfully and you see it only takes around one second here on the top here right but and actually when i was going to the application i was taking some time maybe two seconds three seconds now we need to mimic that delays using the timers okay so if i go here on the thread group level go to the add we have a timer section here and you can see we have a multiple timers here constant timer uniform random timer precise throughout timer okay so all these timers will help you to give a delay between your request and commonly we use either constant timer or uniform random timer and you can see we have other timers as well like Gaussian random timer poison random timer so now what is the difference between these basically this Gaussian random timer will be following the Gaussian method to generate a random time similarly this poison random timer will generate a random value at the same time but using this poison algo but in commonly our all most of the cases will be done using this constant and uniform random timer let's see how they are different and how we can work so now how and where we can add the timers the timers can be added onto the test plan level it can be added to the thread group it can be added to the request as well let me add a timer on the test plan level so this timer will be applicable to all the thread groups and all the requests so here we need to provide a timer for example if i provide a value 5000 so it will take five seconds for each request here okay previously you see that it takes only one second now let me remove this one and run this one here you will see one two three four five then first request then again it's waiting for the five seconds okay going for the second request then will it take five more seconds to complete all the requests here so this timer was applicable throughout the test plan now let me disable this one from here and let me add to the thread group level as well so now this is on the thread group level and now again i'm giving here five seconds so each request because we don't have any thread other thread group now it will act in the same way and you will see how it works so one two three four five first request got executed then it read for five more seconds execute the second one then in the similar way the third one you can see that we can apply on the third we can apply this on the test panel level we can apply this on the third group level now we will see how we can apply this on to the specific request let me disable this one and let me add to this particular request okay so go to add go to timer so what constant timer is doing that 
this is giving a constant delay between the request now let's run this one and you see for this particular request it will take five seconds you'll see here so after five seconds this got executed but without any delay these two requests got executed the reason is that the time is applicable on this particular request now the question arises here is that what happens if we have a timer on a thread group level as well as on the request level so let me enable this one from here and now let's execute this one and see what happens so now because this constant timer is available for all the requests in the thread group right and this one is for this particular request this constant timer is delaying for five seconds and this is for five seconds so this means that this particular request will delay or wait for the 10 seconds and rest of these will be waiting for the five seconds let me run this one and see one two three four five six again you can see once it will reach to the 10 second it will you know execute this request and then for five seconds and then for a more five seconds and it will execute the third one so that's how you can use the timers based on your requirement where you want them in your script let me disable this one and this one too uh, now let me add a random timer so random timer has two values random delay maximum in milliseconds and constant delay offset so what this means is that so i'm saying that the maximum delay should be the five seconds okay and the maximum offset is thousand now what it means it means that the value which will be picked is that between 4000 to 6000 so any value will be picked randomly between this because our actual delay is 5 and we are giving a delay of or we are saying that offset offset is 1000 so it's actually create a boundary and from the boundary it will generate that random value so ideally in most of the cases the random value is really appropriate because being a user i might take five seconds maybe other user might take six seconds similarly maybe another user might take 4.5 seconds right so that uniform random timer really helps you out so let me go to the geometry again and let's execute this one and see this time it will not not be the 20 or something like that 15 it will be different so okay so the whole thing got executed within the eight seconds so this is a random time right so let me run this again maybe it will be eight seconds or maybe it will buy, might be a different value this time again it takes eight seconds let me run it again so it totally generates the value randomly so now you can see that this time it takes nine seconds because the value is being generated randomly last time it takes eight seconds so we need to mimic the time which is random and obviously each user is taking some different time but it should be in some range so when you are creating your script define the range properly and you will get the random values against the different actions on the request level onto the thread group level or even if you want you can put that into the test plan level thank you so much for watching this tutorial if you like our content then do like comment share and subscribe our channel once again thank you so much and see you in the next lecture